Hey, and welcome back for another 3D how-to video in Blender. The next thing that we're going to model in our Medieval Fantasy RPG series is a sword. Now by the end of this video, you're going to know how to model something very quickly and easily that is symmetrical across multiple planes. So after this video, if you want to model anything that is symmetrical in more than one direction, then the mirror tool will be your best friend and it'll save you a ton of time and headache. So go ahead and follow along, jump right into Blender, and let's get started. So first, let's hop right into edit mode. And to create a mirror modifier, we go over to the tabs under the design tree and click on the tab that looks like a wrench. Select add modifier and under generate, you'll find the mirror tool. You'll see that there's uh, multiple axes that we can mirror our object about. And the mirror planes that we want to select are the Y and the Z axis and we'll deselect the X axis. So right now the mirror planes are right in the center of the cube. We want to move the cube so that we can expose those mirrored objects. So let's use the, the origin arrows to just move them over and we'll move it up as well. You'll see that it creates four cubes because it's mirrored in this plane and this plane. Now to move the cube so that it converges right in the center and there's no gaps here, we can go over to the properties panel and we can move the cube until we can figure out where, uh, what distance the cube needs to be from the origin. So if we move this up and down, we see this is about one, and this is about one as well. There we go. So you can see that we can't edit any of the mirrored objects because they're not actually defined objects yet. They're kind of projections of the object that we're mirroring. So the only thing that we're going to edit is this quadrant cube right here. So let's go ahead and start manipulating it and you'll see how this works. So with the face select tool selected, let's grab this face right here and scale it out in this direction. Okay. Now because this is going to be the blade of the sword, it should be a little bit flatter. So let's just move that. And you can see that all of the other objects mimic the motions and the manipulations that we do to this one. Okay, let's lengthen this just a little bit more. Okay, it'll be about that long. And we'll make this a little bit thinner. There we go. So the first thing that we're gonna do is cut this up in a section using the loop cut tool. So over on the left, we're gonna select loop cut and we're gonna put quite a few in here. Let's go with six for now. We're gonna keep this pretty simple just so we can stick with the low poly look that we've been going with with the series. So after the number is selected, we'll put them right in the middle. Now let's start manipulating the side edges of the blade so we can work out what the profile and general shape of the blade will be. So we go down with and make sure that edge select is selected and we can just start manipulating. I think I'm gonna make this look kind of like a leaf shaped blade, kind of like uh, Sting from The Hobbit. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I think that's a pretty good profile. So now that we have the profile created, let's go ahead and create the edge of the sword. We're gonna do that by selecting all of these edges along the sword and having them meet in the middle. So while holding down Alt and right clicking on one of the edges, it'll select all of the edges along the side. Now I see that we it's not selecting this edge right here for some reason. So if we hold down Shift and select that, it'll add that to the selection. Use the Z arrow on the origin tool to move it down and you see that it allows us to kind of move past it and it'll make it very difficult to actually meet perfectly in the middle. To help us move it down to the middle, we can use something called the snap tool. You'll find that down on the 3D view header and it looks like a magnet. When it's selected, it's red and white. And right next to it, you'll see the snap element tool and we want to make sure that edges are selected. So now when we move the Z arrow down, it'll just snap right to the edge and it won't allow us to go minimally past it or uh, uh, right up to it. So now that the blade is created, let's go ahead and make the guard for the sword. Let's go ahead and add mesh and we're just going to add a cube just like we did for the blade. So let's make sure that this was in the same location as the original cube that we made the blade out of. So we want this to be in the middle 
And so that'll turn out to be x is 1, y is 0, and z is 0. OK? So if we go ahead and jump into edit mode, we can add a mirror modifier just like we did for the blade. So under modifier, go add modifier. Under generate, we can find the mirror tool. And again, just like the blade, the axes that we want selected are the y and the z axes. So just like the blade, we can move the cube, and the mirrored objects will reveal themselves. So now let's move these again so that they're right up against the planes, just like we did for the blade. So it looks like this will be 1, z will be 1, and x will be 0. OK, that looks great. So now, just like the blade, all we have to do is manipulate the faces and the edges so that they look like a sword guard. Let's start by just thinning it out a little bit. So we can go to face select, select the face up here, and move that down a little bit. And we want to make sure it's above the blade there. OK, let's move out this out a little bit. OK, that looks like a good general size to begin with. So to add a little bit of detail, let's go to loop cut. And let's put in three. That sounds pretty good. We don't want to go too crazy. OK, and just put those right in the middle. And let's just start selecting edges and mold it into the shape that we want. OK, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. So while we're at it, let's just go ahead and give it a color. Let's go into Object Mode. And with it selected, we can go over to Add Material, New. And what kind of color do we want to give this? Let's give it kind of just like a, a black or a dark gray. That looks pretty good. OK. So my first thought for creating the handle for the sword would be to import a cylinder primitive shape instead of the cube that we were doing, because a lot of swords have cylindrical handles. But if you really look at a lot of swords, they're actually kind of oval shaped and flatter so that it fits in your hand better and so that you can grip it tighter without it rolling around and so that you can actually face the edge where you want it to go. So because we were able to achieve that very easily when we were creating the blade, let's just go ahead and import a cube and do the same steps that we did for, for these other features. We're going to import a cube, put in the mirror planes, and manipulate it so that it looks the way that we want. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to Add, Mesh, Cube. We're going to make sure that this is close to the center. OK, we can move this over here just a little bit. And now let's jump into edit mode, add a modifier under generate. We're going to click mirror and make sure that we have Y and Z selected without X selected. OK, so now if we move them around, yes, we have our mirror planes created. OK, now over in the properties panel, make sure that this is one and this is one so that they're right up against the planes. And we can just go ahead and start manipulating it to make our handle. OK, I think that's pretty much the general shape that we want. So let's go ahead and add color to it. Hop out into object mode. Go to material, go to new. And we want this to be, I keep right clicking instead of left clicking that area under diffuse let's make this kind of a dark brown color so let's go to orange and there we go that looks pretty good okay one thing that i forgot to do is to change the names of the different objects in the design tree over here so let's go ahead and do that right now if we select this first cube it's highlighting the blade so let's label that blade This next one will be the guard. And this one will be the handle. So the last thing that we want to create for this sword is the pommel, which will be on the end of the handle and will allow better balance of the sword. So because we're already on a roll, why don't we just do this the exact same way that we've done everything else on this sword? This will give you a ton of practice for using the mirror tool and manipulating edges and adding loop cuts and all of the different tools that we've used so far.
So while we're in object mode, go to add, mesh, cube, and put it into position. I'm just gonna say zero, zero, zero. We're gonna move it along this axis a little bit and hop into edit mode. We're gonna go to modifier, add modifier, mirror tool, select Y, Z, deselect X. And now when we move it, we can see the different mirrored objects. Okay, now we're gonna make the Y uh, location one, the Z location one, so that they're um, right up against each other. And let's just start manipulating. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that shape, so let's go ahead and add color to it. I'm actually pretty satisfied with the color it is now, but we can make it a little bit darker or change it up a bit. So let's go to Object, uh, Object Mode, go to Material, New, click Diffuse, and let's make it that color. I think it looks pretty good. We're going to rename this Pommel. There we go. So try this one out and make sure to send me pictures on Twitter so I can see what kind of awesome swords that you guys make. Make this sword your own and get really creative with it. So if you have any questions about what you saw in this video or recommendations for future videos, please leave it down in the comments below. Also, if you want to see more videos in the series, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you keep practicing and I'll see you in the next video.